say one of the stories that we heard there, like at the place that you were talking at Auschwitz. What I thought was really good about the trip that we went on was that he told us, our guy told us like personal stories about specific people that went through these certain camps. And it was also like in the moment at the exact place. Mm -hmm. So like you got like a better like understanding of like the surroundings. Yeah. And one of the stories that I thought was like that kind of stuck with me was this was also when we were in the showers and he was telling us this while we were there and like and that was the exact spot that this man and his family were walking in. Um, <coughs> so this story was about um, this family and their mom got taken away from them and from that point on the dad like would not speak anymore like he became completely mute um, and this was happening for a couple of days and then his children finally asked him like why aren't you speaking why aren't you saying anything and his explanation was that because my wife was taken away from me I have nothing else to say to the world so, and then that was the last thing he ever said in his life, and then he was silent for the rest of his life. So, it was, I thought that was yeah. really... He's still alive? Um, no, he's not. Okay, anything else you want to tell us about? Any other impressions? Um, I More think, stories you heard? I think, like, the most, like, like, the fact that three, like, us three girls, also another girl with us came, we're, at the time, we're like 17 years old, like from, we're from Vegas, like we don't know anything about that. We grew up always listening to these stories, like hearing these things in school, like understanding what it is, but not fully grasping like what it actually is. And not that we're ever going to like understand, like that's never going to happen. But like the fact that we could actually like stand in the place, like all of us were like alive now. And like the fact that like we overcame it, like it's like, like a moment of pride for us. Mm -hmm. And that we were also able to like wear our uniforms and like be a part of like an Israeli group and like go with other Israelis and go with our friends from here and like show that we're proud to be Israeli like in a place where people thought that our people would like How were the Polish die. people to you? Did you um, ever get together with Polish people who spoke Polish? Not as much, not, not really. Just. When we like, like the people at the hotel, or like <laughs> yeah. so we, one, one day they gave us a day to walk around. Where was it in? Um, How did you feel comfortable of course when you were there? Um, I felt pretty comfortable. Yeah. Well, except a lot of the times we, if we had like Hebrew on our shirts and we were in a kind of like not safe area, we would have to cover it. Or there were times where we'd have to put like our hockey in our bag and we'd have to walk. They were actually instructed in Israel that they're placed you were good. they cannot wear yeah. the Like put your hockey in your backpack and when we get and we do tekes, which is like the ceremony, then you put it on because like it's a safe, a safer area. But a lot of the times when you had to walk through neighborhoods, like you were not allowed to wear Hebrew. Right. But I still felt, I still felt safe. Also, yeah. I never we, felt unsafe. We couldn't wear like our uniform in... I think it was my Danik. Mm -hmm. We had to wear just regular clothes, yeah. which I personally didn't know why because we wore like our hockey like in every other like camp that we went to, yeah, except shouldn't. we couldn't wear it there. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just the neighborhoods we were going through, they mm -hmm. they said just like some people were yeah. still. Yeah. And this yeah. Is yeah. Apparently, I mean, so. last year <coughs> on the same trip that we were on, like that our friends went on, I think it was in Auschwitz too. That like people were throwing rocks at them on the other because hand, like while they were doing the ceremony. So just to be on the safer side. On the other hand, when we were in Blankenese, the families in Blankenese, the Germans, invited us back to to Blankenese in 2005. All the groups and two two times, three times. And we came back to, to Hamburg, they paid for everything. And we were there about uh, 10 days. And I was invited to, to families, to stay with families. The other group, only me and another guy, we were assigned. I was staying with a, with a 
guy was in charge of the Hamburg Museum. He, was, he told me his story. He had some Jewish blood, about a third, and they survived in Hamburg. Hamburg wasn't as bad during the war for Jews. They, some, they hid some Jews. And so those invited us back from Israel, the group. I was from America, they invited me to come back to Hamburg. And we stayed there at the families. They treated us very nice. So. Okay, we'll take a few questions. To me, to Daniel. Minister? No, I don't have any question, but anybody have a question?